It's another capacity crowd, the ninth of the season, filing into the Chrysler Center as it is Super Wednesday. BTN Basketball presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. And on this Super Wednesday, for the first time since 1992, it's number one Michigan, the top-ranked team in college basketball, taking on the Northwestern Wildcats. Michigan and Indiana shared the top spot in the Big Ten. Right behind them, Michigan State and Ohio State. But don't overlook the Wildcats. They've already beat two ranked teams in the Big Ten. Now the starting five presented to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, Sean. And one significant change in the lineup for the Michigan Wolverines, Tom. John Horford filling in for the injured Jordan Morgan who rolled his ankle the last time out versus Illinois. Horford outstanding on the road versus Illinois. 17 minutes in that ball game, double his season average. It's gonna be interesting to see how he adjusts to this delivered style of Northwestern play. Bill Carmody, former Big Ten coach of the year, four straight trips to postseason play at Northwestern in his 13th year. And what a job John Beeline's done here at Michigan, trying for his second consecutive Big Ten title. They had a piece of that four-way tie a year ago, and now he's got the top-ranked team in college basketball. Lamont Simpson, DJ Karstensen, and Bill Elk. The men with the whistles here tonight. the try. Stauskas a throw away but saved by Trey Burke. Northwestern starting out in a man. Northwestern plays a lot of man to man. They will switch up to that 1-3-1 one, one. and you cannot fall asleep with on Stauskas not only from behind the arc but he can put the ball on the floor as well. Three ball by Give it to number three. 18 points per ball game could stretch you out defensively. 37% from behind the arc. With former Northwestern academic All-American, Sean Morris, I'm Tom Hamilton. Glad you could join us. The ninth sellout of the season. Already one more than a year ago here for the Michigan Wolverines. And this has become an electric atmosphere. Down in the block, the freshman Ola had it blocked. Shot clock doesn't reset. Five to shoot. This is Trey Dempse. Two to shoot. Desperation three. Got rim and a rebound to the Wildcats. And that's a rare second chance opportunity for Northwestern, Tom. They're last in the conference in rebound margin. A steal, but stepping out of bounds with it was Glenn Robinson, the third. And Northwestern very fortunate. The Michigan Wolverines coming off a performance on the road at Illinois where they had nine steals. And Glenn Robinson the third was going to finish that if he didn't run out of real estate on the far side. Sean, when we talk about Michigan, you're talking about one of the best offensive clubs in college basketball, but they also play very well on the other end. Absolutely, and they're going to show almost exclusively man-to-man. -man. They played about four or five possessions of 1-3-1 versus Illinois, but this is a team that will get after you defensively. On that back cut, little floater goes for Dave Sobolewski. Sobolewski coming off a 21-point performance at Nebraska. Nice job by Sobolewski of not over-penetrating because the shot blocker was there. Hit the little teardrop. Nice delivery. Michigan with the ball in the early lead. Two minutes into it. Stauskas post-entry. Banging inside. Horford with the left hand. The miss. Rebound cleared out of there by Swapshire. Horford coming off a really good game at Illinois. He was 3 of 3 from the floor. Played 17 minutes, only averaging 9 per game on the year. He's been battling injuries. Northwestern much more patient this year. Last year they would get that shot up a lot quicker, but a different ball club this year. So young for Bill Carmody. Nice pump fake and knocking down the two. Reggie Hearn missed the first Michigan game, Sean, with a bad ankle. And he can stretch you out. He dropped 20 points on the road at Illinois, and that's an ideal possession for Northwestern. They took the shot clock all the way under 10. For Northwestern to have a chance, they have to make sure that the winning score is in the upper 50s at the moment. Goodbye, it's Trey Burke 5, Northwestern 4, three minutes into it. Burke second in the conference at 18 points a game and off to a good start here tonight. Dempse down low. This 
just a swap shire. Nowhere to go. Nice double by Horford there. Coming over and taking away the spin from Swapshire. Seven to shoot. Sobolewski, kick out, three ball, turn, got a triple. Well, you think he makes a difference? And a nice job of creating a little misdirection play. You saw Sobolewski dribble to his left. That forced the white jerseys to go with him, allowing the kickback against the grain to Hearn. Northwestern up seven to five. We've played a little over three and a half minutes. Nice look down low and a jam to tie it by Glenn Robinson the third. And you talked about Trey Burke's ability to score at 18 points per ball game. Leads the conference in assists at seven and is so efficient, Tom, at almost four to one assist turnover ratio. That's fantastic. Only a sophomore, there may not be a better point guard in the country. Nice look inside. Ola missed the layup. Rebound John Horford. Michigan looking to break the tie. Look at Burke explode. Good ball movement, Stelskis wide open. That is beautiful basketball. You had two guys who gave up pretty good shots for an even better shot for their teammate Stauskas. That's the difference between being a good team and a great team. Great point. Nick Stauskas, the second best three-point shooter in the country, 49% from behind the arc. There's the trap. Burke ahead. Robinson. That's the defense that really paid dividends for Michigan last time out versus Illinois. They're ratcheting it up here in the Chrysler Center. Northwestern had a 7-5 lead. Bill Carmody's face says it all. Michigan on a 7-0 run. We talked about it, Tom. Defense was so important to that tough, hard-fought road win at Illinois, and they are outstanding in going from defense to offense. So Belusky had nowhere to go, left his feet. Michigan just jumped on him and had the numbers. Well, Sean, John Beeline made an interesting point to us before the game tonight. When he was at Richmond and even more so at West Virginia, he was noted for his 1-3-1 zone defense. He said in the Big East, we could get away with it. In the Big Ten, he said, we've had to go to a man defense because there's too many good shooters in this conference. Yeah, that's a great point. And the other thing is that he has the athletes now that they've really bought in. I think a lot of people still think that this is a team that lives almost exclusively with the 1-3-1. That is not the case. Most recently against Illinois, they might have played four, maybe five possessions of 1-3-1. They play well in excess of 90% of the defensive possessions in man-to-man. -man. And guys take great pride in it. Tim Hardaway Jr. has quietly become an outstanding defender. And that defense has spurred Michigan into the 7-0 run. Hearn on the wing. Swapshire out front. Again, they'll work that clock. Ola. Kicks it back out. Sobolewski, almost an air ball, but Northwestern gets another opportunity. Again, a very rare second chance opportunity for Northwestern. They want to milk this clock. They're last in the conference in rebounding margin, Tom. Minus 12 in Big Ten play. And yet they have three offensive rebounds here tonight. Ola backing down off the class and that's a big bounce. Nice move by Ola. Nice recovery. A few possessions ago, he left a similar opportunity short. But good offensive patience. Saw the double team wasn't forthcoming. Spun away from McGarry there. Ola's only a freshman. A seven-footer from Romania. Trey Burke explodes and then kicks it out. And another triple from, you guessed it, Nick Stauskas. It was a small thing, but Trey Burke got down low, and that allowed him to dip his shoulder and get by the defender. You saw the purple jerseys help. You cannot help give help off from Nick Stauskas because he will absolutely make you pay. Michigan is 6 of 7 shooting. They've made all three of their triples. Backdoor cut and a nice look and layup by Trey Demps on the pass from Alex Ola. And if you're going to play in this Northwestern offense as a big man, you have to be able to pass the basketball, and Ola certainly has that skill. Top-ranked Michigan on top of Northwestern, 15 to 11. Hardaway the dump down low and the layup by freshman Mitch McGarry. The unselfishness of this team is really impressive. You can tell that you have guys that, three guys that could go for 20 every night if that were their inclination. All they care about is winning and they share the ball extremely well. Seven buckets, five assists to back up that point. 
Ola, double team, and the strip by Hardaway. Burke, the lob. And another Northwestern timeout. The Michigan Wolverines showing you every bit of their arsenal in the first seven minutes of this game. They can beat you with three-point shots. And here, if you're Ola, you have to recognize that that double team is forthcoming. It wasn't the last time Michigan did a great job of giving a different look to the freshman post player from Northwestern. He puts the ball on the floor, doesn't do it aggressively. Hardaway Jr. with the steal. Again, the willingness to share the ball on the open floor. Burke could have taken that all the way himself if he wanted to, but he gave it up to Glenn Robinson the third. Michigan beat Northwestern in Evanston on January 3rd, 94 to 66. And Bill Carmody said the key in that game was Michigan got up 16 early. He said, we can't have that happen tonight. Thus, he has called two quick timeouts. As Sean, you've got your keys. Yeah, control the pace. Northwestern has been able to do that for a couple possessions, but not extremely well. Hit threes, that's a big part of what the Northwestern Wildcats do offensively. Don't look ahead if you're Michigan. You've talked about it, Tom. That Indiana game is coming up, and then go inside. Don't just settle for the three-point shot. They've done that off the dribble. 19 to 11, Michigan. We played a little over seven minutes. Can Northwestern now compose itself? On the baseline, Turner had a good look, missed it. The freshman McGarry with another rebound. He averages six a game off the bench. Kirk fade away. so difficult to defend is that he's a right-handed player that actually at times seems to prefer going to his left, particularly for that step-back jump shot. Biggest Michigan lead. They've missed one shot tonight. 21 to 11 Wolverines. They've got Indiana coming up on Saturday night. John Beeline said, we aren't concerned whatsoever about that game. We're not looking ahead. They've proven it. They certainly have. Their focus, particularly on the defensive end, they have been locked in in another turnover. Shot clock violation. Boy, the Wolverines are putting on a clinic. Michigan with a 21 to 11 lead. They got another good inspirational speech from that man, Bakari Alexander. You'll hear it when we come back. Thanks to that incredible show, The Journey, Michigan assistant coach Bakari Alexander has become a star with his motivational speeches. And the cat is just scratching up your furniture. What do you do? What do you do to get them to stop? Declaw. You declaw them. But you got to have the right tools to declaw them, Jay Bart. So these Northwestern Wildcats, I brought a few tools out here. You know, we can, we can take their nails off with a nail clipper. Last time we played them, we cut them up. But more importantly, we need guys, because J-Mo is out, to step up. Coach, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He's a special guy. Well, he didn't go to my option. I, I just turned the hose on him. <laughs> Start scratching up my furniture. Well, if you've missed the journey, you've missed one of the best shows on television. And Bakari Alexander has been featured on the journey with his pregame speeches. And how about this past show with Chris Street's mom and dad? That's about as an emotional a show and as great a tribute as you'll ever see. Lob down low, not handled, but recovered by Michigan. Max Bielfeld now in the ball game. And with this early lead, John Beeline could go to his bench. Six to shoot. Trey Burke will let it fly. This is just as perfect as you can play offensively, Sean. Unbelievable. Sobolewski was right in front of him, and Burke was just able to rise up. And in the early going, Tom, Michigan 10 of 11 from the floor. And Trey Burke has nine points, four assists. Michigan, eight unanswered points, leads by a dozen. Northwestern still being patient. 
Arcatulio knocks down a big jumper. Boy, did they need that to try to stay within striking distance. And Marcatulio, a Michigan native, important for him to get going early. And Michigan did a very good job of keeping Northwestern exclusively on the right side of the floor, but Marcatulio able to bail him out with a nice shot fake. Number one in the country, Michigan. Playing like it here in the early going. Stouska, they do miss. They are human. Got to bench him. They missed a shot. <laughs> well, that was just too close. Stelskis lives behind the arc. And he is, I tell you what, he is underrated off the dribble. He can get to the rim and complete. And that's what makes his three-point prowess even more deadly because they have to close out under control. How about Marco Tulio, the senior out of Warren, Michigan? Five quick points off the bench to thwart that Michigan 12-point lead and cut it down to seven. Almost a steal by Marco Tulio. He's everywhere right now. Levert, the freshman, recovers. Halfway through the first half, number one ranked Michigan leading Northwestern 23 to 16. Burke on the drive, draws the foul. We'll have our first free throws of the night. Alex Marcatulio off the bench with this triple. Five unanswered by Marcatulio. Michigan up. Take it with you. BTN Basketball is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, your destination for Big Ten Network games. Also in part by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. The Chrysler Center, newly renovated, sellout crowd. Michigan on top, 23 to 16, and for the first time in his career in Ann Arbor, Jordan Morgan is not going to play tonight. Their starting center suffered this gruesome injury against the Illini. That could have been a much worse shot. Yeah. It's an ankle sprain. Absolutely. And that was right at the beginning of the ball game. Just landed awkwardly rolling over that ankle. And fortunately, it wasn't anything more than a, a severely turned ankle, which is good news for him and good news for the Michigan team. And the upside of that, if there is such a thing, is that the other guys who came in and replaced him, Orford and Bielfeld, really contributed. So their confidence level has to rise. And Coach Beeline now has more confidence in being able to go to these guys and giving them some extended minutes. But it's di very difficult to replace a guy that shoots north of 60% as Morgan does. Trey Burke, he finally misses his first shot of the night. He has 10 points, 4 assists. Coach John Beeline said where Michigan's going to miss Jordan Morgan. The most tonight is on the defensive end against this offense. Yeah, because he's been through it. He understands that you have to exercise defensive patience. And right now, for Northwestern, with the way the Michigan has come out and executed offensively, the fact you're only down eight with the ball, that's reason for encouragement. Now, how about Northwestern? They're shooting 58%, and yet they're down eight. But when your opponent's shooting over 80, <laughs> it doesn't help. They better hurry. They didn't get the shot off. Second shot clock violation. And that one's on Mike Turner. You have to be cognizant of time and score. He catches it in the corner there. He has to know he's got an open shot. He must take it. Well, get involved in the Twitter conversation around this game. Go to btn.com slash connect. Don't forget to use the hashtags. You'll find them periodically in the lower right corner of our score strip. Eight and a half to play in the first half. Michigan with an eight-point lead. Hardaway airballed that jump hook. Rebound cleared out of there by Jared Swapshire. Pretty good job by Ola there, Tom, of moving his feet and giving Hardaway a target to shoot over. Northwestern, no matter the score, they're going to stay patient. They're not going to get into a panic mode. Three ball, Swapshire with a miss. Rebound, Michigan. Levert into the front court will have a Northwestern foul. That's actually not a bad foul if you're Dave Sobolewski because it looked like Michigan was going to have the ability to get to the rim. You're not anywhere near foul trouble. Give the foul yep. and take away that breakaway opportunity. First on Sobolewski. Northwestern's missing their best player. He's been out most of the year. Talking about Crawford who had to have labrum surgery, but he'll be a medical redshirt. They'll get him back. Next season, one of the better guards in all of Big Ten basketball. 
So we've got a timeout. We're under eight minutes to play. Boy, Northwestern could use Crawford tonight. Well, let's take a look at today's All-State Mayhem Index. The Wildcats have beaten two of their last three ranked opponents coming in Big Ten play. They beat Illinois and Minnesota. The problem for Bill Carmody, this is their ninth Big Ten game. Six have been against ranked opponents. That's called Big Ten basketball, Sean. Yeah, absolutely, and one of those wins was on the road at Illinois. They went down and were able to kind of control the pace. They had a lot of similar possessions to what you saw earlier in the ball game with her knocking down a three right at the end of the shot clock. For them to have any chance, that's what they're going to have to do here tonight. But Michigan will get after you defensively. They've been very, very impressive. Northwestern looked like they wanted to show some traffic defense there. Long three. Missed. That time by Spike Albrecht. Just into the game for the Wolverines. Northwestern has it down eight. Have they weathered the storm in your mind, Sean? Well, the fact that they've been able to weather 80-plus percent shooting and turning the, well, the ball over a little bit on early going, in fact, they're only down eight. They have to feel pretty good about where they are right now. This is Ola on the block, banging against Horford. Open look, three, ball, heard. A little flat on the shot. Horford with the rebound. Aldrich, reverse layup by Glenn Robinson, the third. Glenn Robinson, the third, really understands how to run the lane. We'll see him creating extra space by fanning out a little bit. Break down the transition defense by Northwestern. You have to stop the ball. They didn't do it on Albrecht. Michigan back up 10. They've led by as many as a dozen. Marcatulio. Nice job by Stauskas of closing out on that left-handed shooter. Shot clock at 10. This is Marcatulio. The entry to Swapshire. Got the layup. That's a nice move. That's a really quick, assertive move. You saw him kind of check with his hip and understand where the defensive pressure was coming from. He spun away from it. Nice finish by the transfer in Northwestern showing the 1-3-1, one, one, giving Michigan a different look here. Something to try to slow down this Wolverine offensive juggernaut. Hardaway, good fake. Hardaway inside the arc, too strong. Michigan's cooled off a little bit, but they would have to when you were shooting over 90% at one point. And a nice use of the pass fake there by Hardaway Jr., just not able to knock it down. And that's where those shots are going to come from, in the gut of that defense or in the short corner. Under six to play in the half. Northwestern with the ball, trailing Michigan by eight. And if you notice, they went to that 1-3-1 with Trey Burke on the bench getting a blow for Michigan. Good point. Sobolewski with five to shoot. They've already had two shot clock violations. Hearn lets it fly. Desperation. And an offensive foul over the back called on the freshman Alex Ola. Boy, Michigan has a tough defensive. See Ola coming over the top there. Pretty good job by Horford of moving his feet and keeping the larger player Ola on his back. Well, one thing that hasn't changed in tonight's ballgame, Michigan has not committed a foul. They have the fewest fouls of any team in the country. And they're aggressive defensively. They play outstanding help defense. Nice pump fake. Burke with a three ball. Too strong. Kept alive by McGarry. What a play by McGarry. Open look. Hardaway Jr. That's a potential five-point swing in Michigan's favor. If Northwestern corrals that rebound, they have a chance to come down and get a two. But because of the hustle of McGarry, that's a potential five-point swing. The little things. Michigan is so talented, Sean, but yet they're still a blue-collar team. And guys understand their roles, and McGarry certainly does. He's got a high-energy motor. Hearn short, McGarry the rebound. He was a top recruit out of Chesterton, Indiana. Stauskas! <laughs> Biggest Michigan lead, 32-18. to 18. Stauskas with his third. He's had as many as five in a game this season. Michigan, the number one three-point team in the Big Ten. They're at it again tonight. Two 
Ten to shoot. Ola looking to give it up. Hearn on the drive. Hearn tough reverse layup air ball. That was frustration by Hearn. He thought he had somebody in the corner and just threw a shot up. Hardaway for three. Strong rebound by the little guy that time, Sobolewski. The sophomore out of Naperville. 32 to 18, Michigan with its biggest lead under three and a half to play. The Wolverines in command of Sobolewski with a long three missing. They haven't been number one in the country since the Fab Five were sophomores in November of 92. Burke, McGarry, fouled, he'll shoot two. Sobolewski just had to grab him. Nick Stauskas, Tom, you have to find him. He's 49% from behind the arc. He's getting it done. And oh, Canada. the country since November of 1992 and this is what was happening over 20 years ago. They have five were sophomores. Trey Burke, he was certainly just an infant. John Beeline was at Canisius. George Bush was president. Bill Clinton had just been elected as the new president to take over in January. And Whitney Houston with the number one song in the country. And how about this shot? How ironic is this? But all three of those teams have a chance, much as they did in 92, of finding themselves in the final four, making deep runs in the upcoming NCAA tournament. You know, Michigan is so fun to watch because of how they share the basketball and how selfless they are. And one of the great movie lines of all time came in 1992, you can't handle the truth. Unfortunately, Jack Nicholson is not courtside tonight. McGarry, the freshman, knocks them both down. If he was sitting behind me, he couldn't see around my head anyway. <laughs> hey, I think Jack would be sitting in front of us. That's true, good point. <laughs> Michigan with its biggest lead, 34 to 18, under three to play. The Wolverines, a staggering 65% shooting tonight. Nice job by McGarry of popping that dribble handoff. Marcatulio needs help. Boy, Michigan just smothering Northwestern defensively. Five to shoot. Dips. Had it partially deflected. Another basic shot clock violation. It would have been. How about the job Stauskas did of moving his feet? Demps, they tried to clear that side of the floor for Demps. Watch him move his feet, and he doesn't go for the up and under. Nice job by Stauskas of using his link, and Northwestern was not able to penetrate that three-point line until the shot clock was well under 10. How about this, shot? If you didn't think Michigan was already playing near perfect, they haven't committed a foul. They haven't had a turnover. Oh. Well, partially deflected. Wildcats with two to play. That actually is not a turnover. That's a locked shot. Boy, does Northwestern need some kind of a spark here, Sean. Michigan is taking away one of the bread and butters, which is getting to the basket. They're not overplaying. They're exercising defensive patience. They're closing out under control. They're not going over penetrating and trying to go for the steal, which will lead something going toward the rim. Well, maybe Sobolewski gives that spark. He knocks down that triple. He has five. The sophomore, according to Bill Carmody, the heart and soul and one of the toughest kids you'll ever meet. And he has really worked on his perimeter jump shot, Tom. 42% for behind the arc this year. Michigan with a 13-point lead. 1-13 to play. Almost the first Michigan turnover. Well, stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report. Rick Pizzo, Tim Doyle, and Mike DeCourcy will be along from our Chicago studios. They'll get you caught up on everything in the conference. A State Farm Halftime Report in a minute and 10 seconds. Trey Burke, 10.6 assists. Inside McGarry. And if you're Michael Turner, yes, you want to come out and strongly hedge. 
but there's two parts of the help and recover. You have to help, and then you have to recover, because if you don't, McGarry will make you pay as he did there. Almost a steal. Instead, the first Michigan foul, it goes against Mitch McGarry. And Michigan foul, uh, number four, Mitch McGarry. Watch right here. You're going to help, but you've got to get that back, because here comes McGarry rolling right to the rim. Back in the game now. You have to sprint back there. Yeah. John, I, I know sometimes you have a half like this where you're nearly perfect, but is there a weakness with this Michigan club? Not that I've seen, because of the different guys will score in different situations. They can go inside, and this is without Jordan Morgan. Yeah. Bear this in mind. Three ball, miss. Abrahamson with a miss, Marco Tullio the rebound. Here's the scary thing for the rest of college basketball. Michigan coach John Beeline said, oh, we can get much better. Remember, we have six youngsters who are still learning to play defense. 33 of Michigan's 36 points tonight for freshmen and sophomores. Abrahamson, short on the triple. Michigan with six seconds. Burke into the front court. Burke lets it fly. Well, there wasn't hardly anything John Beeline's club didn't do well. Especially on the defensive end of the floor, they did a great job of throttling Northwestern. 36-21, Michigan on top at half. Let's join Rick, Tim, and Mike in the Chicago studios, the State Farm Halftime Report. Tremendous teams that Michigan has had down through the years. Never has Michigan been 19 and 1. That's their record now. They're ranked number one in the country. And Northwestern's got a big hill to climb, down 15. Sobolewski, Hearn, Demps, Swapshire, and Ola. Same five that started the game for Northwestern. Northwestern again will be very patient. And I would imagine, Sean, first four minutes or so will be telling. Absolutely. They have to work the shot clock and Michigan has done a great job of taking away any of the dive cuts toward the rim in seven seconds now on the shot clock for Northwestern it's a spot throw in to really look for Michigan to try to jump the passing angles here John Beeline's club has played almost exclusively man to man tonight as they have all year five to shoot Sobolewski down to Ola he better hurry Everybody got the putback. And he was very fortunate, Tom, because he needs to put his shoulder to the rim at seven feet and make the defender come through him. Fortunately for Northwestern, it came off the backboard. He's able to clean up the mess. Same five that started for Michigan. Burke, Hardaway, Stauskas, Robinson, and Horford. Remember, Jordan Morgan can't play. Badly sprained ankle. First game he's missed in his career. Burke misses. And the rebound to Ola. And Northwestern down 13 a minute into the second half. Wildcats have never beaten a number one ranked team. This is their 18th try in Northwestern history. Ola over Horford. Got the foul. That is just the second foul on Michigan tonight. No school in college basketball has fewer fouls on the season. This is first team first. I'll tell you what, that's a tough one to have go against if you're Horford. He did a really good job of moving his feet. Ola did a, a pretty good job of setting up shot down there and being patient offensively, seeing that the double team wasn't forthcoming. But if you're Ola, Tom, you have to go and throw your body toward the rim and not allow the shot blocker, in that case, Horford, to recover with his length. Bill Carmody was saying today, Alex Ola is going to be really good. Seven-foot freshman out of Romania, but like so many European players, Sean, they're not used to the physicality. And that's just a matter of adjusting to this level of play. I agree with Coach Carmody. He's going to be a very good player. We've seen his ability to pass the ball, has a good court awareness. But if you're going to play with your back to the basket, you have to be willing to put your shoulder to the rim and into the defender. Horford against Ola. 
Horford powers it up and in. He's kind of become a forgotten man, but he's getting a chance tonight. What well, Horford has been battling some injuries of his own. You see him with the knee brace out there. Gave them some really good minutes off the bench when Morgan went down at Illinois, doubling his season average, playing 17 minutes. This is Ola. Kicks it out. Sobolewski, 15 to shoot. Swapshire on the drive. Ola, set shot. Got the bounce. So Ola has a team high eight, and Northwestern has clawed back to within 11. He has eight six here in the second half. I was told there'd be no math. My head hurts now. <laughs> recruit when he came here and a really good job by Michigan Tom of spreading out the floor and Horford essentially had that whole left side of the floor to himself well he comes from a basketball family his dad Al longtime NBA player his brother Tino of course back-to-back -back titles at Florida now in the NBA Swampshire well, that's one of the few times Northwestern's been able to attack the rim, Tom, and get into the lane. And Swapshire coming off a double-double performance last time out on the road where he had 11 points and 16 rebounds at Nebraska. Maybe Northwestern picking the pace up a little here in the second half. Rebound, Ola. You still don't want to get into a track meet with these no. guys. This is a team that averages 79 points per game. Northwestern's three of four shooting here in the second half to get to within 11. They did lead at one point by two. Demps with a two ball. And I tell you what, they missed Ola there. It's, it's fortunate for Northwestern that Demps hit that jump shot because on the slip of the screen, Ola was wide open underneath, but Demps didn't see him immediately. Clears the face with his left. Well, John Beeline doesn't like what he's seen from Michigan. Northwestern says, yeah, you may be number one in the country, but we're not going away. Wildcats within nine. Well, in 17 previous tries, Northwestern's never beaten the number one ranked team in the country, but two years ago, they had two shots at the Buckeyes. They had the chance at the buzzer to beat Ohio State at home and in the conference tournament in Indianapolis. They took the Buckeyes to overtime where it was the inside presence of Jared Sullinger, which was the difference in that Big Ten quarterfinal. Twice in one season, Northwestern almost knocked off number one ranked Ohio State. Bill Carmody's club down by as many as 16 tonight. And what has happened to get them back in this game? They've gone inside. Swapshire was able to attack the rim. Ola has made his presence felt. They've scored on all five possessions here. Very efficient. Kind of giving Michigan a taste of their own medicine. The Wolverines, the most efficient offensive team in the country coming into tonight. Trey Burke on the drive. Into the corner. Glenn Robinson the third with a miss. Rebound, Marco Tulio. In the last, last year, when these two teams played, both of those games went to overtime. One of those, of course, being here in the Chrysler Center. But Michigan, in the conference opener this year, just drilled Northwestern in Evanston. Northwestern now working the clock, 15 to shoot. Three balls, Sobolewski, he got fouled! He'll shoot three as Trey Burke picks up his first personal, and not a real wise decision on the part of Burke to go for the block. John Beeline's look says it all. This game isn't over, folks. Michigan with a nine-point lead as we played almost four and a half minutes in the second half. What a job athletic director David Brandon has done here in Ann Arbor. The Chrysler Center now completely refurbished. It's now one of the nicest facilities in the country to say nothing about all the other facility renovations here on campus. Yeah, we had the opportunity to kind of walk around and see the locker room and things. They have the, the concourses here are remarkable. I don't know if you saw the water poles. You probably saw me picking the nickels out. Well, and this used to be dingy, gray, almost dirty-like. It's spectacular now, and you've got a great atmosphere. This is no longer a quiet building. They were able to 
continue to play here while they did the renovations and phases and it has certainly paid dividends and what happens Tom is not just for the players who are currently here but more importantly your ultimate consumer for a facility like this yep. is a young person deciding where they're going to go to school and and having the proper facilities to put you in the ball game is a key component of that. Wow, Sobolewski's almost wow. airballed both free throws. He'll get a third. He's a 60% free throw shooter. If you're Michigan right now, watch for something coming off the back of the rim to see if you overcompensate. Boy, did you call that? I think you can coach. No, no. There's, there's not many things I can I can do, and that's certainly at the top of the list. Now we know how you became a three-time academic All-American. Ballot stuffing. Hartford blocked oh. but fouled. Hartford missed a good chunk of last year. He was out with a foot fracture, now wearing the knee brace, but has been strong tonight. And a nice job of moving without the ball by Horford. A little bit of a wheel cut. They're able to catch him down on the block. And, you know, you can tell he's just still kind of shaking off a little bit of that rust from those injuries. But he gave them some big minutes last time out versus Illinois. And he may have to do so for the foreseeable future because of the injury to that young man, Jordan Morgan. Yeah, you never know how long those severe ankle sprains will keep you out. But there is depth on this Michigan club. So Hartford gets a brief blow as he has all five of Michigan's second half points. Michigan with a 10 point lead. A lot of time left in this one. Tom, how about the empty possession with the clock stopped? You, you come up empty on three free throw attempts. Palming the basketball, turnover on Reggie Hearn, the sixth on Northwestern. Well, Super Wednesday continues. Next, third ranked Indiana heads to West Lafayette. What a battle that'll be with Purdue. Coverage starts right after our game, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Records mean nothing when those two get together. Indiana had been number one in the country. Now Michigan number one in the country. Stauskas on the drive to miss. McGarry had the putback attempt, couldn't convert. And Swapshire has it for Northwestern. I think Stauskas just didn't have his steps down properly because he has shown the ability to finish with the left hand, but there he went with the inside of the right hand. Never really had any kind of flow to that shot. Right, Northwestern has had the momentum here in the second half. We talked about how critical the first four minutes would be of the second half. Sobolewski into the corner. Swapshire missed the three. Ah. Attempt by Hearn. He couldn't tip it in. Here comes Trey Burke into the front court. Stauskas for three. Rebound Swapshire. He had 16 rebounds in Northwestern's loss in Lincoln. The most by a Wildcat since the days of Evan Eschmeyer. This is Swapshire. Michigan is leaving the door open for Northwestern to cut into this lead. But Northwestern has to take advantage of it. Who does it belong to? It belongs to the purple and white. Ten-point Michigan lead, 13.45 left. Now, Michigan obviously does a great job of scouting, but they cannot fall asleep on Sobolusi over there in that far corner. Northwestern many times will look to throw to the far side, and instead they throw it to the courtside seat holder for the Michigan over an unforced turnover and Tom we talked about it Michigan is leaving the door open but Northwestern has to take advantage and throwing it away in an unforced manner on an inbounds is not the way to do that well, I guess not Michigan is too good to give them those kind of opportunities Trey Burke pull up shot short there's McGarry again blocked by Swapshire and a Michigan foul. How quickly did he get off the floor? I thought McGarry was going to be able to finish that very easily, and I think McGarry did as well. Watch how quickly Swapshire, number 12, gets off the floor right there. And we talked about Ola and his need to put the shoulder to the rim. McGarry needed to do the same thing there because if he goes in there and yep. sticks that left shoulder, Swapshire is going to have to go through him. Although that is a difficult shot for McGarry. He's on the right side of the floor, and he's a left-handed guy. Second foul on the freshman McGarry. This is Swapshire. Jump stop, kick out, Sobolewski. Missed another triple. That'll be over the back on Alex Ola. 
And that'll be the second on Ola. Good blackout by Mitch McGarry. Boy, Northwestern could be close to oh. even here, but they just haven't capitalized. You have the unforced turnover on the inbound. You had the three missed free throws by Sobolewski when they really had the momentum yeah. going. And then they had missed a tip in by Hearn. Michigan is not going to let that door stay open for very long. John Beeline saying his Michigan club has embraced being voted number one in the country. They're not focused on it, but they're embracing it. They've earned it. And they now lead by a dozen. And a great job on that dribble penetration by McGarry. He sealed off Ola, allowing an unobstructed path to the rim for Trey Burke. Basketball. And then Ola on the pick and roll with Marco Tulio. Ola with the layup. Pulls the Wildcats back to within 10. 12 and a half minutes to play. Ola has eight points this half. 10 in the ballgame. This is Burke. He had it blocked but was fouled. He'll go to the line. And you can hear that one. Nice job by Burke. Again, he's a right-handed shooter, but he is very comfortable going to his left. And nice job of understanding that he had Trey Demps on him. And a few times ago, now watch right here. Watch the job on the dribble drive right there The McGarry does. He seals Ola, which takes him out of the play. He's not able to come in and help. Well, you talk about winners. Well, Trey Burke may be at the top of the list. 97 and 5 in his high school career at Northland High School in Columbus. It helped having a teammate like uh, Mr. Sullinger, who's now with the Boston Celtics, but this kid's special in his own right. Well, if it was like Little League and you got ice cream after every win, <laughs> you weigh 450 pounds. <laughs> they won a state title together, did Sullinger and Burke. And then Burke comes to Michigan, helps the Wolverines as a freshman get a Big Ten title, and now has led them to the number one ranking in the country and a 12-point lead in this one. And let's not forget, at one point in time, Craig Burke had committed to Penn State. Wow. Can you imagine him and Anthony Bell. Don't tell Pat Chambers that. He, he's not only a conference player of the year candidate obviously but he is a legit top two or three national player of the year without question hard away on the baseline rebound swapshire that's a good point if you're number one in the country there's a pretty good reason why and trey burke is certainly one of the major reasons why and not just because of his ability to score and there, you'll, you'll see guys that have maybe more assists but not to do it as efficiently as that young man does with a four to one assist turnover ratio Dems with the miss but then Marco Tulio with the steal and rim the three but there's Dems missed the layup and it's Michigan basketball and just a frustrating sequence here for Bill Carmody and the Northwestern Wildcats Michigan by 12. How good is Trey Burke? Look at the company. He is starting to keep. How about that? That's pretty exclusive company. And when you take a look at what Trey Burke has done, leading to our Reese's Perfect Combination, Trey Burke, his ability to score, as well as to deliver to his teammate, Nick Stauskas, who's missed his only three-point attempt here in the second half. But Burke can not only score in his own right, but much like Magic Johnson, that's pretty heady company. He can create opportunities for his teammates, and he does it so efficiently. He doesn't force anything, and it's because of his ability to get in the lane going either way. A lot of guys are very effective going in with the right hand, not necessarily with the left, but Burke is a right-handed player who shows no hesitancy in going with his left. Burke's a sophomore. When Magic Johnson was a sophomore, Michigan State won the national championship. Greg Kelser had a big oh. hand in that, too. People forget how good Greg Kelser was. Indiana State has it. Nick Stauskas. Talk about good. What a freshman out of Ontario, Canada. Stauskas with 11. Michigan with 14. Point lead. Burke with a steal. And Burke called for the foul. Northwestern dodges one there, Tom, because it was a lazy pass 
that allowed Burke to hop the angle. He and Sobolewski really battling in the open floor, and they get Burke with the push off. Well, that's a tough one if you're Michigan. And Northwestern, very fortunate. They're going at it. I tell you what, if, if I think that's a play on. Boy, he is fun to watch. Unless you're Bill Kerman. Yeah, he's not having a good time watching it. 10 25 to play. Michigan leads Northwestern 47 to 33. Northwestern, if they don't rally to win, they're going to look at about a five minute stretch here in the second half that they let this game get away when it was there for the taking as Ola missed on the drive. Well, our Bass Pro Shops in the net. Stauskas with this running jam. You talked about him off the dribble. Everyone talks about his three ball accuracy. He's not one dimensional, Sean. No, and if you don't close out under control, he will get to the rim and complete. He's more than just a one dimensional three point shooter, without question. Hurt found Hurt. So Horford, after another terrific pass, Trey Burke, his seventh assist. He's on his way to another double-double. And Michigan looks like they've kind of recovered. You knew that the Wolverines were not going to remain stagnant offensively for an extended period of time, and we talked about it. They left the door open for a little bit, but that, that open invitation was not going to be without an end. John Horford has all eight of his points this half. Michigan has its biggest lead halfway through the second half at 50 to 33. Whistle away from the ball. And Karis Levert, the freshman out of Pickerington, Ohio, with a foul. A 7 0 run for the Michigan Wolverines when it looked like Northwestern had a chance to maybe stun the Wolverines. It was a 10 point game. And Northwestern, let's not forget, they had a chance to cut into that lead with three foul shots. It came up empty, they missed a tip, then they throw the ball out of bounds, and you knew that Michigan was not going to remain stagnant offensively for long, and well, Abrahamson, deep. The freshman out of West Des Moines, Iowa, a 38% three-point shooter. And Northwestern, like Michigan, averages eight threes a game, and they'll need some three-ball magic to get back into this one. They're just four of 16 from beyond the arc tonight. Burke on the drive. And there's that ability to go left. It's going to sound crazy, but if you're defending Trey Burke, even though he's a right-handed player, you're going to start trying to force him right rather than left. That's a great point, Sean. It's kind of hard to get that into it your is. head, isn't it? Backdoor cut. Swafford with a left-handed reverse layup. Nice job by Northwestern of answering that's a staple of that type of offense. When someone dribbles at you, you automatically go to the rim and Swapshire honor that moment of truth. Jared Swapshire, remember, he graduated from Louisville. Stelskis for three. It belongs to Northwestern, but Jared Swapshire now at Northwestern because he's working on his master's in sports administration. Thus, he didn't have to sit out a year. Nice job of recognizing that when your teammate dribbles at you, this is one of the few times. Now, Glenn Robinson III got out of his stance and he got caught watching the basketball. That allowed Swapshire to get to the rim and Sobolewski found it. Swapshire on the block. Kick out Ola. That's almost a set go, shot. Go, go. And he missed it. Horton with a rebound. By the way, you can leave a four year school like he did. Swapshire played four years at Louisville, including the Final Four last year, and not sit out a year. He didn't play four years. He was there four years, played three, because of a degree that he couldn't get at Louisville. That's a master's in sports administration at Northwestern. That's kind of a loophole there, Sean. Sam Maniscalco, similar situation at Illinois last year. Five to shoot. Trey Burke against Marco Tulio. Wow. Missed the layup. Horford had it, but was fouled. That's got to be a guard's nightmare. Shot clock winding down, and you're trying to stop this guy, Trey Burke. No matter which way you try to force him, he's efficient getting to the rim. Not able to complete there, but his teammate cleans up the mess.
BTN Basketball is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, your destination for Big Ten Network games. Also in part by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. And by Case IH. Be ready with agronomic design from Case IH. Visit CaseIH.com slash agronomic design. Another sellout crowd at the Chrysler Center. Top-ranked Michigan just voted number one this week, leading Northwestern 52 to 38. Michigan trying to keep pace with their opponent on Saturday in Bloomington, the Indiana Hoosiers, numbers one and three in the country. And Indiana follows right after this game against their in-state bitter rival, the Purdue Boilermakers. That one follows right here on BTN. John Horford, all nine of his points have come here in the second half. He's having the best game of the season for him personally. Oh. You got the second one to fall as well. And you can see his confidence level continuing to rise, following up his really, really nice performance on the road in Illinois with a strong, strong performance here at home. It's that old adage, next man up. That's what it's been for John Beeline tonight, going to John Horford for the injured Jordan Morgan. And a foul out front against Michigan. Well, Friday night, it's a classic Michigan hockey foul. matchup. Michigan State will be right here in Ann Arbor to take on Michigan. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Yost Ice Arena, another of the many renovations a beautiful building here now on the campus of the University of Michigan talked about the job athletic director Dave Brandon has done with a little help from the alumni I should add huge upgrade in so many facilities here in Michigan on the drive Abrahamson had it stripped recovers 15 to shoot how about the job defensively by Stauskas moving his feet very active with the hands Good pick. And the missed layup by Ola. And then the putback missed by Swapshire. How many times has that happened in the second half to the Wildcats? You can only draw something up. You can't make it go through the rim. And Northwestern has left a lot of opportunities at point blank range here in the second half. Open look. Robinson. Western didn't kick it down. Michigan is slamming it shut. Biggest Michigan lead at 19. And they're about a minute and a half away from deadbolting it. <laughs> Michigan now three players in double figures. Northwestern only one. Abrahamson the miss. Jeff, or I should say Bill Carmody thought he had to have four double figures tonight. That's not going to happen. And he'll have to call a timeout. Michigan starting to taste it now. And a really nice job by Michigan of understanding that they had the numbers. Northwestern crashed the offensive boards, and Michigan kicks it up. But the last time down the floor, Glenn Robinson the third in the far corner, right down over here. Good ball penetration and the kick out for Robinson who knocks it down and then they show their versatility on the very next possession Tom their ability to go from defense to offense so quickly and flood the floor with spaces four double figures tonight for Michigan they have four that average double figures on the season Michigan up 59 to 38 604 to play our Verizon key connection just happened moments ago. Trey Burke leading the way. Nice job by Burke of going with his head up. And you saw Hardaway. It seems like a little thing, Tom. But he flared out on that right wing, which increased the passing angle and the efficiency for Burke to find him. A lot of times you'll see guys running straight lines. If he does that, that's a much more difficult play for Burke to convert. Another one of the little things. Oh. And Trey Burke, 16 points, 8 assists. He's had as many as 12 assists in a game. On the back door, layup missed again. McGarry yanks it out of there. Michigan with numbers. Hardaway on the cry. He'll go to the line and shoot two. That's Glenn Robinson, the third. 
We've got a lot of suns of in this game. And again, Tom, you take a look at it. Sobolewski not able to convert in the tip by Turner. McGarry digs it out. And how quickly he looks right up the floor. That's his first instinct. And then Robinson does the proper thing, getting the ball in the middle of the floor. And it's not just Trey Burke that can make you pay in transition. They work on ball handling regardless of their position. Hardaway can lead the break. Robinson can lead the break. Stauskas at times can lead the break. Glenn Robinson the third not as big as his dad who was one of the all time greats at Purdue missed both free throws by the way Mitch McGarry who ignited that break with a rebound he now has 11 rebounds off the bench that equals a career high Northwestern with the ball they're down 21 third ranked Indiana and Purdue coming up next on BTM and Tom Tim Hardaway Jr has struggled offensively but where he has been phenomenal has been on the defensive end of the floor Reggie Hearn the leading scorer for Northwestern came in averaging 14 he has five points right now wow. he hasn't scored oh, since the 1630 Reggie. mark of the first half first oh. that's a drought well, I think you might get some female for that <laughs> I think it also points out what you talked about as Hearn finally gets a point the unselfishness of this club you, you've got a lot of stars here at Michigan that are willing to, to give. And that's not the first time this year that Tim Hardaway Jr. has accepted that role. Earlier in the conference season, D.J. Bird was torching the Wolverines from behind the arc. Tim Hardaway Jr. accepted the role, completely took D.J. Bird out in the second 20 minutes. 59-40, Michigan with the lead in the ball. A little over five to play. Hardaway on the drive. Banked that in on the run. Just a really smart play. You saw him kind of dip his shoulder in there to absorb the contact and then fade away. Sobolewski for three. Too strong. Marco Tulio with a long Northwestern rebound. Marco Tulio has given a really solid performance for Northwestern tonight, tracking down some offensive rebounds and knocking down a couple of threes earlier in this ballgame. Northwestern has nine offensive rebounds. Michigan by one. 13 to shoot. Turner looking for help. Pound. Oh, that's I yeah. tell you what. They, they, that was a goaltend on the initial offering because McGeary went up and touched the rim while the ball was on the cylinder, but Northwestern scored nonetheless. So Hearn doesn't get it. Swapshire does. 61 42 Michigan. 4 10 to play. This is Glenn Robinson out front. Almost to steal by Marco Tulio. Burke has it. Splits the double team. Boy, he split that with ease. That's why you dribble with your head up. Again, it sounds like a small thing, but if he has his head down, even for that one dribble, he might dribble himself into traffic. And Michael Turner, watch. His head's up. He sees Turner coming up, and he splits the double team. He is such a fan of Chris Paul, and it's never fair to compare a college kid with a star like Chris Paul, but you do see some similarities. And Chris Paul was a dynamite guard at Wake Forest. Can score. There's a 17th point, one under his season average. Didn't we talk about yeah. he and Magic Johnson? 17 points, eight rebounds. Well. If Trey Burke does what Magic Johnson did in East Lansing, they'll be naming streets after him as well. And he thought about not coming back to college. He made the wise choice to come back to Ann Arbor. There also is no harm. You can explore you know, what your draft opportunities are at one time. And there, there was really no harm in him doing that and trying to figure out what his value might be. But coming back, you can see his game continue to elevate. Can you imagine him missing this? Yeah, no. Number one in the country. It doesn't get any better than this. The Maze Range catching their breath. Thank you very much, Rick. Michigan on top of Northwestern, 63 to 42. The Michigan Wolverines rank number one in the country, and Mitch McGarry, the Motel sixth man of the game. He's matched a career best with 11 rebounds out of Chesterton, Indiana. 
same hometown as Jack Novak. How about that town and what they've given to this basketball program? And how about what that young man means to this basketball program because he gives them a different dimension. He gives them a physical presence inside. And I think, you know, in addition to his 11 rebounds, when you watch him, again, back to the little things, his willingness and ability to look up the floor immediately as he secures the ball. One of the better outlet passes, particularly as a freshman, I've seen in quite a while. Freshman. He and Glenn Robinson, the third best of friends. How much havoc are they going to wreak on the Big Ten for years to go? Michigan with a 21 point lead under three and a half to play. Stauskas, another freshman. And he was fouled on a reach in. Bonus time. Marcatilio picks up his third. Back in the game now for Northwestern is number 13. Number one ranked Abraham. Michigan. Trying to stay in first place with third ranked Indiana. Indiana will have to beat Purdue for that to happen. And then Indiana and Michigan meet on Saturday night. As this meat grinder of a Big Ten schedule continues. Rebound, Reggie Hearn. This is the beginning of a pretty compact series of games from Michigan, Tom. Tonight's game will be the first of five in about 13 days. So how you manage practice time, how you manage a guy like Jordan Morgan and his ability to practice and try to get that foot help is going to be one of the challenges they face. Oh, what a save by Robinson to Horford, but blocked by Northwestern. A scrum. Michigan called a timeout and got it. So they'll maintain possession of the basketball with 2.48 to play. It didn't result in the basket, Michigan but watch this save. How about the athletic play by Glenn Robinson the third? That thing is going out of bounds. He's able to save it. Northwestern sticking with the play. But then what happens, rather than reaching for the ball when it's on the floor right here, get down there and dig it out. Marcatulio tries to do just that. Nice hustle by both squads. Well, we talked about the schedule that is ahead for Michigan. Look at that. Indiana, Ohio State, in Madison, in East Lansing. And then back home to take on Penn State. Good Lord, that is some kind of schedule. But you know what? Everybody in the Big Ten is going through the same kind of rigors when you have five teams ranked in the top 25 and it's reflected in the team's respective RPIs and the conference RPI and you know coming up after us Tom there's many things many storylines with that Indiana Purdue game but I'm going to keep an eye on the bigs AJ Hammond's really quietly establishing himself as one of the better players in the cut in the conference rather and he's going to give Cody Zeller a little bit of a different look because of his physical nature and the fact that he is first in the conference of block shots Glenn Robinson the third. He has 13. One of four Wolverines in double figures. Northwestern just running some clock now. Kemp's for three. To skim the rim. Robinson has it for Michigan. And the job that Tim Hardaway Jr. has done in throttling the leading score for Reggie Hearn. Very, very impressive. Hearn got off to a very good start if you go all the way back to the beginning of the ball game. And Tim Hardaway Jr. has not let him breathe since. Michigan calls a timeout with 151 to play. 6542. Michigan number one in the country. For the first time since November of 1992, in November of 1992, they were talking chess as Bobby Fischer beat Boris Spassky the last time Michigan was number one. I don't think any of these kids here in the Maze Rage have heard of either guy, but they know all about their Wolverines basketball team. It's going to take an awfully good team to beat Michigan. They've only lost to Ohio State and Columbus. Yeah, this is a team that because of what they do on the defensive end of the floor is going to give them a chance every night out because we mentioned they went through a little bit of an offensive lull, but they're able to lock things down just enough to pull away. Let's not forget, this was 43-33 at one time. 
Well, and then this man took over, Trey Burke. Our Quicken Loads amazing performance. He's able to get to the rim, get his teammates involved. He can go right or left. Such a difficult guard. And again, his ability to create space off the dribble is compounded by the fact that this is a Michigan team that really understands spacing, so you don't have the opportunity when guys are bunched up for help defense to get over there, and the help defense isn't there immediately, he will make you pay. 18 points, eight assists, and oh yeah, one turnover. By the way, Michigan is a team, two turnovers. That's one of the many reasons that they lead the nation in terms of offensive efficiency and points per possession coming into tonight. 66-42, Michigan in command. And the fans chanting, we want the Hoosiers. They'll get a shot from Saturday night, but first, Indiana's got to get by Purdue right after this one. On the pick and roll, Serena with a jam. 22-point Michigan lead. Also Kune now in the ball game along with Josh Bartlestein. This is Corey Person. Climbs with a miss. Northwestern couldn't save it. Well, tonight it's a special presentation of the journey. Boy, you've got to watch this, folks. Tonight. It's the series that follows the teams you love at 11 Eastern, an all-new episode this Saturday at 9 Eastern, presented by Chase Freedom. Not a better show in all of television. Three ball missed, rebound Trey Demps. Jimenez. Esso Akune with the rebound. 36 seconds to play. Michigan will be 20 and 1 for the first time in school history. Just voted number one in the country. They weren't looking ahead tonight as Akune drives and scores. They did a really good job of kind of weathering a little bit of a storm here in the second half. They clamped things down defensively, and Northwestern left a lot of scoring opportunities on the board. And to Michigan's credit, that window of opportunity was not open for very long. What in your mind makes them right now the best team in college basketball? Their unselfishness, their underrated defensively, and the fact that you have a point guard that operates at a high level of efficiency. Well, Sean, tonight Michigan does what they've done all year long. Four in double figures as John Beeline and Bill Carmody shake hands. And for the first time ever, the number one ranked Michigan Wolverines are 20 and one, something that's never happened in Michigan basketball history. So for Sean Morris, I'm Tom Hamilton. Thanks for joining us. Michigan wins it 68 to 46. Now to the Big Ten studios with Rick Pizzo, Tim Doyle, and Mike DeCourcy. Take it away, guys.